Tu primo grande amore non ci lasceremo mai. Oh my god! Ciao! E Vincenzo Cantiello qui. I'm so 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 happy to take part to this interview with Destination Eurovision. My name is Terina Krasnovetska. Hey to Alicia Rega. Hello, mi sono Eliana Gomez Blanco. Hello, vi di eri mai, vi ho conosciuto il Cambri e la Junior Eurovision, vi ho letto in the canal. Hi, it's Effi Gika. Zdravo, io sono Maria Spasovska. Come on, Jobam, è stata Maria Mamatashvili. Zdravo, io sono Mila Moskov. Hola, sono Melanie Garcia e sto per rispondere alle vostre domande. Here we go. Hi, this is Roxy from Destination Eurovision. Welcome to the Junior Stars. Two winners. 10 different participants from the 9 different countries and 5 different editions of the contest. How do they look like? How do they remember the contest they took part in? And what about their music career? Let's figure out! Question number 1. It's been some time after your participation in the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. How are you? What's new in your life? What's new in your music career? Uh, I'm great at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's been a while after my participation in Junior Eurovision. I represented my country, Republic of Macedonia, uh, in uh, Belarus in 2018. Uh, it was an unforgettable experience, I can say. It was uh, two years ago. Uh, time has already passed. Um, I got a little bit famous, I can say. I upgraded myself as a person um, also many more things that uh, made my life more inter uh, in yeah more more interesting <laughs> uh, also I have released my new song uh, in Macedonian it's called Sakam in English it's called I want uh, you can see it and listen it uh, on my YouTube channel Maria Spasovska if you want of course uh, and I have some new projects, new planned projects, we can, if, uh, which you can find out on my, on my social medias, so you can follow me there also. So, although it's only been a short time, uh, if my experience uh, of the Junior Eurovision Song Contest, I've already managed to release uh, my first solo album in sight and present it in Poland. Moreover, I take an active part in my interesting projects and one of my greatest achievements uh, after Eurovision is the performance on the FM on the Independence Day of Ukraine. But I wouldn't stop at this stage of my develop because I have uh, great plans uh, for life. Well, after Uni Eurovision, I've been singing, of course, I've been dancing, well, I do many lots of things, um, but then uh, it comes the quarantine and the coronavirus. Uh, I also released a new single that is called Grita Conmigo, Scream With Me in English. And well, about the quarantine and all that, uh, I have so many concerts that had been cancelled. But now I'm so so happy because I'm um, returning to the stages, I'm returning other time to see the fans, the crowd, the audience, I'm returning to some TV shows or radios and I'm so so happy. Well, um, it's been almost a year since I represented my country at the Junior Eurovision and um, well, I'm doing great <laughs> to be honest. Um, uh, I started a new year as a freshman in high school and the experience has been quite amazing, I should say. I met a lot of new kids, new people, new friends. Um, I started a high school in a new city, which is not my hometown. And um, as you know, a pandemic started. So thankfully they found a vaccine. So I'm pretty sure that by the end of March, we'll start going uh, to school instead of being online. Online is fine, but it's kind of complicated. So I'm hoping that we'll start school. And as for my music career, um, I've been in and out of the studio and I'm hoping to release something very soon. Um, I'm very good right now. 
a bit worried because of Corona and I'm very scared. So I haven't gone out of the house for quite some months. But um, I found this time, I found the opportunity to write music. And now I have my own studio, which um, I produce my own and write my own music, which is very fun because it lets me to create something which I really love. I am really great. First of all, I'm really great. And uh, um, on my life and my music career, I've had some new songs. And uh, um, my new song that just came out is called uh, Take My Hand. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the new stuff. To be truly honest, it hasn't really been that busy uh, um, at the moment due to the circumstances that have gone on. Um, uh, the lockdown was was quite an experience, I have to say. I had a lot of time to think to myself. Um, many, I was supposed to be performing in a few gigs, but they were obviously cancelled, unfortunately. So I've had. I've spent the time relaxing and trying to find inspiration in what's around the house, really. Um, I'm doing great. I feel like because of the whole COVID thing happening, I've taken like a break from singing. Um, I used to do like Broadway Method Academy classes that do like singing, acting and dancing. And I also work with an agency in New York that sends me to like commercials and like little shows I can participate in, which is really cool. But for now, like I'm taking break and like doing online audio. I'm good, thanks. I have a new friend. This is my cat. Her name is Guantanamera. I recently released a new single called Nie Czekam. In English, it means I'm not waiting. Um, together with my friends, we made a music video trend from TikTok was our inspiration trend uh, related to the Euphoria series which is one of my favorites I really love this uh, series uh, it would be nice if you would uh, check it out it's been a really really a long time you know and uh, after my victory to the general revision song contest uh, I I have done a lot of things in my music career and those in my personal private life, you know. Um, I graduated in uh, foreign languages, even if my English is not the best, I'm sorry. And um, moreover, now I'm, I'm studying in a university, uh, doing some important song with an important Italian discographic agency in uh, Milan. It's Milan in English, Milano. You know, and due to COVID-19, due to the coronavirus, uh, uh, we pause the project. So I have to wait a little bit and then I can continue with my project. Question number two. Has your life changed somehow after your participation in the Junior Eurovision Song Contest? Of course, I mean, Junior Eurovision is one of the biggest shows in all over the world. I mean, yeah, because uh, now, people of all over the world send me messages saying that they love my songs, they love my performance, and I'm like, oh my god! And they are from so many countries, and also now I have friends of all over Europe and Australia, no? You're in Australia, and I love it. Yeah, of course, definitely it has changed. Uh, from a little gir a girl with a dream, uh, I turned into a participant in Junior Eurovision. It has definitely changed, absolutely. Um, a big dream comes to reality, so yeah, of course, it has changed a lot. My cha my life has changed a lot, actually. Um, you know, when, <laughs> uh, when you participate in, in something as big as uh, a Eurovision contest, um, of course, you get a lot of attention, a lot of social media attention, and um, you gain a lot of followers. And uh, yeah, um, I've learned how to uh, communicate with uh, people over the internet, and I've learned how to um, maintain an audience and stuff like that. Um, I should, I have to say, I love talking with fans and um, talking about how they're doing and communicating and just sending love. <laughs> I love doing that. Um, a little bit. I was more recognizable in uh, my country. 
Well, yeah, it has changed a lot because I uh, like more fans come and follow my um, life and my music career, um, and I get to um, share my music with more fans, and it was definitely a boost from uh, Junior Eurovision. Uh, it has changed quite a lot, actually. Um, I've had quite obviously the followings on social media have gone up and. Um, the community have been really, really supportive of it. Um, many people have come up to me and been like, oh wow, hi! And um, it has been quite, it's quite unusual because I wasn't expecting it. Um, this time, I think, just like, it was a year and a half ago, I would not have expected any of this to have happened. So it's been, it's been quite amazing, really. Yes, of course. It has changed. Uh, after the junior year of vision, I became more recognizable. I began to communicate uh, with people from other countries and I've got a lot of fans. I very love my fans. Love you. <laughs> um, definitely. Um, I've learned so much from, you know, just participating in it. I've worked with like amazing people from it. Um, the contestants, like, they're so nice and it was amazing to, like, go through this journey with them. So, yeah, it has really, like, affected my life in a good way. Um, I think the biggest part, part which changed was that um, I now have my own studio, going back to that. Because I, I had never written a song or anything before Junior Eurovision. And it really inspired me, like, it's made me realize how much I love music and how much I want to continue on music. So I think that's the biggest change there was. Yeah, well, I've changed it because the junior revision taught me how to sing without worries and, you know, fears. I have to fix these things. And thanks to the junior revision, I fixed this important part of myself and uh, now I understand, I understood that the most important thing is to sing and just be myself. Third, number three. Do you still have some contacts with the other participants or representative of your country in the Junior Eurovision Song Contest? Uh, yes, I do. I've kept in contact with quite a few um, from the actual contest, the Junior Eurovision Contest last year. Um, obviously wishing them happy birthday, if there's, if there's a birthday or supporting them when, when they bring out songs and stuff. Um, I've also been in contact with, um, like I've also been in contact with the people who I was in a, I was, there was a programme, a Welsh programme before to choose who was going to represent Wales. And I have kept in contact with them. We've had a few Zoom calls, which has been quite fun actually, because I've got to um, see how they're doing and how everyone as well in the junior context have been doing as well yes we have um a group chat actually and sometimes we speak there um, but i speak mostly to isdea and mila moskov they're like my two best friends from junior eurovision so we speak i mean i think every week or so <laughs> of course I still communicate uh, with almost all participants uh, of the Junior Eurovision 2018. Also, last year I was spokesperson uh, from Ukraine in Poland, where I met the participants uh, of Junior Eurovision 2019. And we became uh, true friends uh, with people. Uh... Yes, we kept in touch all the time. Luckily nowadays it is easy to connect with people, uh, hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away from uh, from you, of course because of the internet. Um, we share our new projects, we support each other, so yeah, we keep in touch. We keep in touch. Um, yes, I do. I mostly have them on like Facebook and Instagram. I still talk to like Rigo and like Sofia Roll from my junior revision year, so. Yeah, I still do talk to some of them. Uh, unfortunately, not with the participants. It's very difficult to keep in touch when there is so much uh, distance between us. But I have uh, contact with some people uh, who are with me in uh, Georgia. 
really no but actually i lost all, all of my contacts with the italian participants but i am a big 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 big, big, big friend of destiny i love her a lot and uh, i know she's doing a lot of important things in malta and, and also abroad so uh, i'm really proud of her and uh, i think destiny is one of my best friends of the general vision yes i do um i i really talk with darina the most because she's super nice and sweet and i um i don't like talk with messages too much but i do see their live videos on instagram most yeah i do um we all have a group chat on instagram and we sometimes from time to time we chat with each other see how everybody's doing um I still talk with Eliana and Jordan and Matthew and pretty much everybody. Of course, you don't know how many uh, hours and days we are talking because uh, we made a group, a uh, Insta group and we also made a WhatsApp group. Yeah, we have a lot of groups of the Junior Rio Vision 2019. So yeah, we still have in contact and we, and we miss us so much. So yeah, we ride like all day. Question number four. What's your best memory from the Junior Rio Vision song comp? Um, I think it was the moment where I stepped on stage and it was where I sang. And then when I finished, I think that was I can't explain what I felt at that moment. It was just, I feel it was magical in a way. Um, it was just amazing. I had been working so hard for about eight or nine years. And then to finally be there, I just couldn't believe it. I should say that the whole week was absolutely amazing and it's unforgettable. But the best memory was being on stage. Absolutely. Like, it was just a feeling I just cannot explain to you in words. It was the best. <laughs> I guess I can't pick one memory because the whole adventure was great and I will never forget it. Uh, the fact that I was there is a great honor for me and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Uh, but I have to admit, uh, I liked Georgia and um, the food they served us. Well, the whole experience, I have to say, was probably just amazing. Um, but there is one memory when I was, so we'd had a full day rehearsing on the stage and then we'd got back to the hotel. And as I walk in, 30 family members and friends had come from Wales and I remember them surprising me. And it was honestly such a shock. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that feeling. The number of people at the Minsk Arena was the most memorable during my performance. It was an incredibly cool atmosphere. And also a personal uh, acquaintance with the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko. Um, that's hard to say. I feel like the whole um, journey was an amazing memory, but for specifics, I would say when we were in Malta and we were in the hotel with all the contestants and it, I was turning seven, everybody sang for me, which was really nice of them to do. So I'll never forget that. That was really nice. Wow, that's a, such a difficult question. I mean, because I have many, many, many great memories, but yeah, I think I have one, yeah. I remember it was like eight and nine in the afternoon, no? And we were all the countries on the Euro Club. And we made a dance battle, we put music and we were like dancing all together, singing all together and it was so cool because we made a dance battle and I love it. Actually, uh, one of my best memories in General Vision was that I fell in love with one of the participants. If I don't go wrong, I fell in love with the Norwegian participant. I, I don't remember the name and neither the song. And uh, actually, uh, I, I, was, I had a big, big crush 
on this girl and uh, I was 14 and I didn't know how to approach to stay next to this girl. <laughs> it was the, the, the main thing that was in my mind all the time in the gender revision song contest. It wasn't a, I need to win, I need to sing good. It was, I need to stay next to this girl. And it was, oh my God, oh, so, so funny. I think it's impossible to choose only one because I have a lot of memories that I will remember forever. Uh, first of all, meeting all the participants, also meeting the the president of Belarus. It um, it was a great honor. It was an unforgettable experience. Also to be followed by police and journalists with cameras everywhere. Also, it was a, something that um, not everyone uh, can experience. Uh, and lastly stepping on the junior eurovision stage i think that was the the best memory uh, my best memory was definitely gonna be when we sing the song light up with everybody in the stage it was so much fun i had a lot of fun on that kind of moment it was like super amazing question number five are you a sentimental person for example, do you have some special emotions in you where you sing or you're listening to your Eurovision song? Or do you still have your staging costume somewhere in your closet? Um, I have to say, I do, I, I think I am quite, I have to be in the zone before I sing. So I usually put, um, do yoga before I go on stage and I pick a specific song that will relate to the song that I'm singing at that moment. Um, so for Callan and Kira last year, right before I went on stage, I um, did yoga to Human by The Killers. And it was, it was a song that started pumping adrenaline into me. And my mentor noticed that and she was like, right, we have to use that song. So that's the song that I would listen to right before I go on stage. And I'll, I'll just never forget, it'll just, it'll just pump me up so much and keep me so focused to sing Helen and Kira, I will, I will always, whenever I hear that song, it will always take me straight to practicing before going on stage. For me, the song I love, it always feels so personal for me and singing it, I am overwhelmed with incredible emotion. Um, yeah, I still do have my white dress, which is really nice to, you know, still keep it with me. Um, but whenever I listen to like my song, for example, I do get like emotional just because it reminds me of all, all of the like butterflies that went through um, my mind whenever I was like in the moment, you know, and like just winning. Well, I still have uh, the costume from um, the Junior Eurovision and yes, I definitely do sing it on my home. I put it on the TV, my, my Barbie song. And I sing it with my little brother, and we have we have a lot of fun. Um, yes, I do have um, my costume, which I wore. We actually wanted to frame it, but because of Corona and like the you know the mess that's going on right now, we didn't have the time to go to the store to buy like a frame and frame it properly. But yeah, I mean it's still there, and when I frame it, I'll post the picture. <laughs> I don't have my staging costume because the, the Y, you know, the Italian channel who did, who organized the, my, my presentation to the Junior Revision Song Contest in Malta in 2014, uh, took all my staging uh, um, clothes. So I actually don't have them. I, I really don't like to see myself singing on stage. I just want to sing and record song and when I record a song, I, I like to listen to myself just to know if I do some things that I don't like, if I have to change something in the recording session and other things, but I don't like to see myself on YouTube singing on stage. Yeah, I am a sentimental person. I have my costume at my home, of course, I keep it. Um, it is impossible to, to listen to my song uh, home, which is full of emotions and not to, to feel anything. So of course, of course, uh, I have emotions when, when I think. 
yes sometimes i just like to sit down and see my performance at junior eurovision one more time uh, i'm satisfied with my performance and of course i have my staging costume it hangs in my uh, dressing room at home yeah about that yes 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 i still have my staging costumes i remember that i have like there my dress my shoes i said i think i have the earrings too yeah i have it all and it's like when i say the staging costume oh my god it wasn't a dream it was a reality oh my god shocked <laughs> well firstly i am a sentimental person i really like if something is cute or adorable i cry immediately <laughs> so um i still have my costume Uh, it's right there, right back there, <laughs> it's in my closet, and um, um, I, the feelings and emotions that I miss mostly are the feelings of being on stage, and um, I love singing my song. It's just it brings back memories, you know. It's it's something that it's unforgettable, <laughs> really. And uh, with my leg, I'm doing a lot better. And um, my doctors are saying that I can do basically anything now because at the beginning I couldn't even walk straight, <laughs> as you know, but now I'm completely fine. Thank you for asking. And question number six. If you could totally change your staging for the Junior Eurovision and do whatever you want, the money is not important, would you change anything? And how would it look like then? Um, it's funny, but I wouldn't change anything at all. After all, the performance uh, turned out just fine. And uh, I couldn't wish to get more out uh, of it. Um, I wouldn't change anything. Um, so many professionals like worked with to like make every little detail like perfect. For example, like my dress, my makeup, my like song. We worked on it for so long. And it was just perfect overall, so I don't think I would change anything. I would like change just a little bit. I would add some more for some more dancers on mm -hmm. my performing. Uh, but that's it, like not more stuff, only the dancers, because we could not get some dancers to make like the song more cooler. It wouldn't look like because I wouldn't change anything. Um, as I said before, I'm pleased with myself and I'm happy with what my performance uh, looked like. Mm, that is why this is my decision. To be honest, I don't think I would change anything really about it. It was so perfect. It was just what I imagined. So I, I don't think I could change it in any way. I love my performance at Junior Eurovision, but I think I would walk because, <laughs> you know, like my delegation, they were like, you have this and to go with the graphics and stuff. But I like to walk a lot, not go running and stuff, but on the stage, I like to walk a lot. So I think I would walk or and maybe wear pants instead of a skirt. But I don't think It's a maybe. I would still keep it as it is because, you know, it's junior Eurovision. You do it once, you do it right. Well, really, I don't have any problem with my performance on junior Eurovision. So I wouldn't change nothing because I really loved it. Because it was like all the fishes behind me and the dolphins like swimming right there and the... Uh, Uh, swim stars and I don't know the lights. Oh, I I loved it. So I wouldn't change anything. It was so cool. Mm, I I don't think that I would change anything. I wouldn't change anything because everything I wanted to to say throughout my my performance I already did. Uh, the message I wanted to spread uh, I already spread. So uh, I I don't think that I would change anything. No, um, I definitely would not. It was every, everything was perfect, and I think that it, everything was supposed to be like that. It was I was supposed to um, 
tear my ligament and I was supposed to have that cast on my leg. So yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh my gosh, I don't know. First, it wouldn't be uh, an Italian, a classical Italian ballad. Because to Primo Grande Amore, you know, it's a, the classical, the traditional Italian ballad and uh, I really don't like that kind of music, you know? But I have to represent Italy, so it was the best choice to represent Italy, but it wasn't my style, it is not my style. So I would change in, in uh, something like, you know, more Adele or Beyonce, something like, you know, Conchita Abuse, uh, more that kind of music, you know, and um, about about the stage in general, I think uh, I, I think that essential is perfection. So I don't like uh, a lot of dancers. Maybe some background vocals, and I think it, it would be perfect.